Change your conception of yourself and you will automatically change the world in which you live. Do not try to change people, they are only messengers telling you who you are. Revalue yourself and they will confirm the change. An awakened imagination works with a purpose. It creates and conserves the desirable, and transforms or destroys the undesirable. Assume the feeling of your wish fulfilled and observe the route that your attention follows. Nothing comes from without, all things come from within, from the subconscious. If a man looks upon any other man and estimates that man is less than himself, then he is stealing from the other. He is stealing the other's birthright, that of equality. Dare to believe in the reality of your assumption, and watch the world play its part, relative to, to its fulfillment. Man moves in a world that is nothing more or less than his consciousness objectified. For life makes no mistakes and always gives man that which man first gives himself. If you judge after appearances, you will continue to be enslaved by the evidence of your senses. Sleep conceals the creative act while the objective world reveals it. In sleep man impresses the subconscious with his conception of himself. The conditions and events of your life are your children formed from the molds of your subconscious impressions in sleep. All conceptions are limitations of the conceiver. Only as one is willing to give up his present limitations and identity can he become that which he desires to be. To reach a higher level of being, you must assume a higher concept of yourself. Because of your belief in external things you think power into them by transferring the power that you are to the external thing. Realize you yourself are the power you have mistakenly given to outer conditions. You must be in the consciousness of being or having that which you want to be or to have before you drop off to sleep. Once asleep, man has no freedom of choice. His entire slumber is dominated by his last waking concept of self. You are already that which you want to be, and your refusal to believe it is the only reason you do not see it. To attempt to change circumstances before I change my own imaginal activity is to struggle against the very nature of my own being, for my own imaginal activity is animating my world. It is imagination which makes one a leader while the lack of it makes one a follower. Prayer is the art of assuming the feeling of being and having that which you want. Change your conception of yourself and you will automatically change the world in which you live. All the honors of men in a state of sleep are as nothing. The great secret is a controlled imagination and a well-sustained attention firmly and repeatedly focused on the feeling of the wish fulfilled until it fills the mind and crowds all other ideas out of consciousness. Think truly, and thy thoughts shall the world's famine feed, speak truly, and each word of thine shall be a fruitful seed, live truly, and thy life shall be a great and noble creed. Never claim, I shall be that, let all claims from now on be, I am that I am. Everything depends upon our attitude towards ourselves. That which we will not affirm as true of ourselves will not develop in our lives. Feeling a state produces that state. Actually, you are destined to reach the point where you realize that through your own desire you can consciously create your successive destinies. You must be conscious of being healthy if you are to know what health is. You must be conscious of being secure if you are to know what security is. Affirm that we are already that which we hope to be and live as though we were. To rise in consciousness to the level of the thing desired and to remain there until such level becomes your nature is the way of all seeming miracles. The individual's inner speech and actions attract the conditions of his life. Man's chief delusion is his conviction that there are causes other than his own state of consciousness. Never go to sleep feeling discouraged or dissatisfied. Never sleep in the consciousness of failure. You must assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled until your assumption has all the sensory vividness of reality. Sleep is the time when the male or conscious mind turns from the world of sense to seek its lover or subconscious self. He who rises from his prayer a better man, his prayer has been granted. You imagined yourself into your present state. If you don't like it, you must imagine yourself out of it and into another. It is all a matter of movement. A change of feeling is a change of destiny. Consciousness follows vision, and I step into the vision and explore a world just as real as this. What we must work for is not the development of the will, but the education of the imagination and the steadying of attention. Prayer succeeds by avoiding conflict. Prayer is, above all things, easy. 
Its greatest enemy is effort. Spiritual growth is the gradual, I would say, transition from a god of tradition to a god of experience. To the unenlightened man this will seem to be all fantasy, yet all progress comes from those who do not take the accepted view, nor accept the world as it is. When will and imagination are in conflict, imagination invariably wins. To desire a state is to have it. Love is not love if there is no beloved. Claim it, it will respond.